We welcome you, everyone, uh, from my side. AJ, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, phase shifting transformers and how to implement uh, phase, uh, on load tap changes here. And uh, first of all, I'm going to talk uh, about design factors of uh, phase shifting transformers. And then we would look at the criteria that are important for on load tap changes. Um, we would uh, talk about uh, the adaption from the OLTC to the PSD and at the end uh, I would show you some example uh, we, what kind of project we have out there in the world already realized and um, to get some impressions. <clears throat> so first of all when we start thinking about phase shifting transformers um, then we would uh, of course uh, look at uh, rated power and this is not different to any other transformer of course but uh, the next thing would be uh, the phase angle. So we are not talking about uh, percentage of regulation range. Now here we're talking about an angle in degree and uh, how many uh, steps uh, we would need to uh, realize a certain angle. So this would be different to normal transformers. Then of course, uh, rated voltage of the system line is important uh, for the design and um, in many cases, phase shifting transformers are very huge pieces of equipment and they have to be shipped uh, around the world. And uh, the shipping limitations, uh, especially if you leave uh, the waterway and you go on railway or on the road, uh, can cause certain problems. So this is something that uh, has to be considered, of course. And um, the OLTC performance requirements uh, are a point uh, for phase shifting transformers. In many cases for OEMs that are new in this business, this is kind of a new situation because uh, when you create a normal transformer, you would come up with a design, you select an OLTC and everything is fine and you go with it. This is different with phase shifting transformers. If we look at phase shifting transformers, a limited uh, component in many cases can be the on load step changer. And if this is the case, you have to start with uh, the ability of the onload tap changer and then adapt your uh, transformer design to be able to get out most of what you need from your phase shifting transformer. So it can happen that you have to change your design based on the onload tap changer. And <clears throat> another important thing is the short circuit capacity. Um, of uh, the connected system and if we look at uh, certain designs especially if we look at single core designs we will see that later on uh, the onload tap changer if it's moved to the k position how we call it at mr you have no uh, reactance uh, you have no impedance in your uh, power line anymore so if you have certain um, uh, limits for short circuits uh, it can be the case that you need an additional reactor because uh, in the K position, uh, the single core design, you don't have any impedance that would limit your short circuit. And on the right hand side, you see a table uh, as an example with, uh, with certain inputs we need uh, to come up with uh, the proper OLTC. <clears throat> so, when we know the angle and uh, the throughput power, of course, uh, we usually would start with the overloading. And uh, in many cases, um, uh, this uh, people talk about overloads, yes, of course, but at the end of the day, it's not always clear what is what it's meant by the overload. And if we look at the standard, there are certain overloads. Uh, there's the normal cycling loading, and that's well defined by the standard. There's the short time emergency load and the long time emergency load. And sometimes we have customers that are coming up with seasonal loads, and this is uh, all fine. But at the end of the day, we have to be very clear on that. Uh, because one thing is we need the rated parameters and then we get the voltage across the tap winding and then we can uh, charge the insulation for the OLTC. But what is special about uh, this application? If we increase the load on uh, a phase shifting transformer, the step voltage will increase as well. And this is very unique because if you look at a normal power transformer, if you increase the load, the step voltage is going to stay constant. 
but this is different here. So if you increase the step voltage with the load, the switching capacity of your on-load tap changer is affected, and this is something you have to consider, and this will lead to certain limits uh, if we talk about overload. And we had cases where OEMs were coming up to us after they had the design freeze with the end customer, and then we asked them, what is your overload condition? And they were not quite sure on that. And then we said, okay, if you, uh, if you need certain overloads, you have to change your design. And this is very painful experience. If you have your design freeze, and then I am going to tell you, you have to change your design. Something you don't want to happen. So it's very important uh, to clarify all these issues up front. Another important thing is, beside the overload, uh, what are you going to do with your phase shifting transformer? As we have seen before, that uh, there are certain ways to use it in the grid. And uh, what we see quite often is that phase shifting transformers are op operated in parallel. So if you operate the phase shifting transformer in parallel, you have to be aware about the fact that um, the onload tap changer is not always operated in a synchronous way of both units. That's just not possible. There always will be a time delay. So if you have different voltages, uh, on your booster uh, windings, then you will uh, create a circulating current between the phase shifting transformers. And this circulating current uh, will add up to the load current on your phase shifter. And uh, for thermal reasons, that might not be the big issue maybe for a certain time, but the onload tap changer must be able to handle this current. So in many cases, we would ask our customer, is there any parallel operation planned? And if so, what are the circulating currents? Because we have to consider them. Another point is, especially if you look at single core designs, is um, uh, the potential uh, connection uh, of the tap winding. And uh, there is one special design this, uh, with a single core design where you get very high um, recovery voltages uh, on uh, uh, the pre-selector. And in some cases, they are so high that you cannot handle them with a tie-in measurement. And then you need shieldings on your windings, uh, windings maybe. So if you look at the regulation windings in the, at the sketch in the middle, it can happen that you have to shield them because we just cannot handle uh, the potential uh, uh, parameters there. And this is something that should be considered up front and not at the end of the design stage. So another important uh, issue is uh, the interlocking. And if we talk about interlocking, there are three different scenarios. So the first scenario would be interlocking between switching components inside the transformer. If you have, uh, as we see it on the left-hand side, um, a two core design with a booster application. And now uh, you see at the booster, we have an advanced retard switch. <clears throat> and in the exciter um, unit, we have uh, a coarse fine winding arrangement. Then um, you only can operate the advanced retard switch if you put um, the terminals of the booster uh, to the ground connection with the onload type changer in the exciter unit. So that means in this case, uh, you have uh, to bypass all the uh, regulation winding in the exciter with the onload tap changer. That means you go um, to the end of the regulation, uh, uh, to the minimum turn position of the fine winding and to the minus position of the coarse winding. And then you have ground connection put to the terminals of the booster uh, transformer and in this and only in this position you are allowed to operate the advanced retard switch. So this interlocking will be realized by MR. So this is not the problem because we are focusing on that. So if we know the design, if we know you use advanced retard switch, we are going to realize this interlocking. But it becomes more difficult and more critical if we talk about interlocking uh, between transformer and other components in the switch yard. And as we can see here on uh, the sketch in the middle, that there is a bypass of these two transformers. And if you operate the bypass and the uh, phase shifting transformer is not put to a neutral position, you basically have a voltage source that is uh, short circuit by the bypass. And then you drive several 
kiloamps through this circuit, and this might not be good for your phase shifting transformer. So for that reason, uh, it might make sense to have interlocking there. And the third interlocking condition is between transformers. As I already mentioned, if you have parallel operation of transformers, you might need an interlocking between these two units that uh, this difference in steps uh, are not getting too huge that you don't generate uh, too big circulating currents. This is to consider especially for OEMs here. If uh, we look at uh, the right selection of the OLTC, there are certain parameters that play a role. One thing is the PSD design that determines uh, the um, the onload step changer and especially its position. So if we look at uh, the design or at the sketch on the left hand side, uh, you see a single core design. If we have a single core design, the onload tap changer is placed at the line end. So we have full voltage on the onload tap changer, and that would be a limit, of course, for the onload tap changer. We usually see that up to 245 uh, kV. That would be a certain, uh, yeah, that a certain limit. Uh, above that, uh, this design is not uh, possible anymore. And another critical thing is, as I already mentioned, uh, you have to look at uh, the short uh, circuit and uh, your needs there in the grid, because if you go to the K position with this design, you don't have any impedance in the grid anymore. So there's nothing that would limit uh, a short circuit here. If you look at the design at the right-hand side, it's a uh, two core design and uh, the onload ch tap changer here is sitting in um, in the star connection and um, uh, you have the possibility with the different ratios of boost and exciter to come up with uh, ratios that would allow you the optimal uh, uh, selection of an onload tap changer and uh, all other things are printed here that are important as the step voltage, the max through current, of course, uh, the phase shift has an impact as well on the step voltage, and uh, yeah, insulation, of course, of, uh, is critical for the OLTC here. So, and now I would like to, uh, to stress out a bit uh, what I already mentioned. Um, here I have an example uh, just to show you what that means for us uh, when we select an uh, onload tap changer. If you look at point one, that might be our working point for the onload tap changer. So that would be with nominal current. And now you would think everything is fine. And usually if you look at the standard, uh, the standard would tell you uh, that uh, the um, uh, cap switching capacity of your onload tap changer must uh, fulfill the need that you can increase the load current twice of the nominal current and then you're still within the red dotted line so that would be the limit the, our OLTC is able to handle. Now you have to know with a phase shifting transformer if you increase the load the step voltage would increase as well. And in some cases you have a working point where you would leave that red line. So if we double the load current from point one, you would leave the red line to the right. So you would leave the switching capacity uh, limit of our OLTC. So now my challenge would be to find uh, the right maximum switching capacity um, uh, to se select a proper onload tap changer. And if I go to uh, point two, I, you can see this is, is not quite uh, the double of nominal current, it's less than that. And I have now to choose uh, a proper transition resistor and uh, that might be point three, but at point three I don't have a transition resistor, so I have to use transition resistor at point four for this uh, working point one we see here. And additionally to that, I have to reduce the maximum overload maybe to 1.5, for example. And if you go to the standard, the 6214 uh, part two, the application guide of, uh, guide of onload tap changes, you will see there is a, a, a graph that will explain that this is accordingly to the, nor to the standard, to the norm, uh, because of the fact that the step voltage is increasing um, with overloads here. So that's very important. And the main message here is when you want to uh, in implement an onload tap changer to your transformer, 
and you would would like to do that in a proper way, we need very close um, uh, teamwork together with the OEM. Otherwise, it would become very difficult. And uh, that's important message here to say. Now, I'm basically at the end of my presentation. I only just would like to show you some examples. Here we see uh, a unit, uh, a two-core unit in the US probably. Uh, done by former Elin, today Siemens Weitz uh, in Austria. And you see two tanks here, Exciter and the booster unit. You have the six bushings and uh, on the picture at the right hand, uh, the small picture, you see the connection between these two units. So you have this, uh, these tubes that would connect these two units. Then here we have a smaller unit that might be for a utility somewhere in Germany, I don't know. This was uh, uh, done by um, SGB in Regensburg, so that's a local OEM here just around the corner. Here we see an active part of a very big unit. I think this is installed somewhere in South America. And you don't see it at the first sight, but uh, we printed it uh, underneath the picture. This uh, active part is equipped with 10 OLTCs, so that's quite uh, a big project here, they realized. And here we see an, uh, a small unit with two active parts and three OLTCs uh, manufactured by Siemens. So these are a few examples. And at the end, of course, we have uh, one unit installed uh, in your country. and um, if you uh, go to uh, the picture with the green cubicle, you also see a bypass switch here. So, um, yeah, sad to hear that it's not in operation, but um, we've heard that at the beginning you had about 40,000 operations within the last four years. Uh, that's quite moderate for a non-load uh, tap changer inside a PST. Usually we see up uh, to 20,000 operations a year. But in general, you can say uh, onload tap changers uh, see much more operations. Uh, if you uh, com uh, compare that with normal uh, transformers in the grid, so okay, I'm at the end of my presentation, and if you have any questions, uh, yeah, don't hesitate.